In this video, I'm going to go over solutions to the arithmetic exercise. Since this is the first exercise, I'm going to go show you how to navigate to the file. Now, your file is going to be in a different folder on your computer, but you'll follow the same steps. So these are some of our folder options right here. You're going to click on the manila envelope with the green arrow, and that's going to give you this folder window where you can navigate to wherever you're keeping your MATLAB files. Mine are just sort of in a temporary location, so you know, pay no attention to the specifics of this but you just navigate to whatever folder. You're not gonna see the files themselves, right? You still wanna navigate to the folder, click select folder, and then the files within that folder are gonna show up in your current folder window. So I'm gonna click on the exercise itself and the exercise pops up right here, great. So this is the standard formatting that I'm encouraging folks to use. If you prefer a different formatting, you can use it. Clear, uh, deletes everything out of the workspace, CLC, cleans off the command window, and close all, closes any graphs or figures that we have open. So this just resets us basically back to zero, back to a starting place. Format compact means my output is gonna be single spaced, which is what I prefer. And format short G just tells MATLAB how many decimal places I would like displayed. And it's relatively short, which is just my preference. Uh, however, if MATLAB thinks the number is too long, there's a certain limit it has, it will display the number in scientific notation. All right, so I, I click up anywhere in uh, this top area. It doesn't really matter as long as I'm in any of these highlighted lines. And then I'm going to use Control and Enter to run the code in that section. Now, you separate one section from another using two percentage signs and then a space. And the space is mandatory. You see this little blue line that goes across right here. If I get rid of the space, that blue line also disappears. And now all of this code is in one section. And so if I click anywhere in here and do Control Enter, it will run all of this code, which is not necessarily what I want and not what I want in this case. So we're gonna separate our separate sections with two percentage signs and then a blank space, just like that. So let's get into the arithmetic here. And I encourage you to go through and complete all of these exercises or at least attempt them all on your own before you look at these solution videos. All the content for the course is linked in uh, the description of the video and I'll try and remember to post it in the comments as well. All right, so our instruction here is to wrap the following calculations in a display function or DISP for short. We're gonna keep using CLC at the start of our sections just to clear off anything that was previously on the command window. So. What we're being asked to do here is basically get rid of these little warnings that show up in this sidebar. And the warning suggests that we add a semicolon uh, at the end here to suppress the output of this line. So basically if I run this code as is, control enter, it'll display out the results of all these calculations. And it's saying, well, maybe you should suppress that with the semicolon. But what happens is if I run it with the semicolons on here, then I don't get any output at all. Uh, and what I would like is, I would like the solutions to display, but I would also like to not have these little orange warning tick marks. So all I have to do is wrap the word display around each of these. I type fast, and I have a variety of little shortcuts that I use to do so. Uh, so one that I'm gonna use frequently is hold Control and Shift, and then use my arrow key to just grab an entire word, and then I can copy it. Now you can't see my keyboard, but that's what I'm doing. Control Shift, and then you can copy one phrase at a time. So for example, let me show that up here. So I'm, I'm right in front of the W of wrap, right up there, and I'm gonna do Control Shift, and then my right arrow key. One, two, three, four, five. And you can see, I just have to tap it once to select the whole word. So that's one of my little shortcuts that I use, and I'll try and remind people of some of those shortcuts as I go through. All right, so that's the solution for this section. That's what we wanted to do here. Next one, the instructions say, I wanna add seven and 18, and then divide the result by 11. How do I do that in MATLAB? All right, so I want to add seven and 18, so seven plus 18, and then divide the result by 11. It would be incorrect to then just do divide by 11. Instead, I need to use parentheses to specify the order of operations. MATLAB understands order of operations in exactly the same way that order of operations works in math class. PEMDAS, if you've heard of that before, is actually a lie. Yes, parentheses, whatever's inside the parentheses does go first. Whatever is exponent, that does go next. 
Multiplication and division are the same operation, right? You don't even need division. Just multiply by a fraction. You don't need to divide by four, multiply by one fourth. Multiplication and division are the same operation as our addition and subtraction. You don't need subtraction, just add a negative number, right? So it's a little bit misleading is this. So anyway, we need the parentheses here to uh, get what was specified in the question. And then I might as well put it in a display as well. And then I'll run it with control enter. Great. And there's my result right there in the command window. All right, for this question asks us to download Zero to MATLAB, which is a free MATLAB textbook. I recommend it, uh, and you can get it as a PDF at this link right here. Uh, and it asks us to do the questions, the six arithmetic questions on page 13. So let's go do that. All right, so I've got the textbook open right here. I wanna go to page 13. So I'm gonna click right there and type in 13, hit enter. All right, here's our six arithmetic questions and we are given the answers over on the right side. And these go from very, very simple to a little bit more difficult toward the end there. So let's just go through and do each of these. 5.5 .5 minus 4.1. All right, and I'm gonna display each of them. All right. There's our first one. I'm not gonna bother running it yet. Here's our second one. 5.7 minus 2.8 divided by 4.3. We do need to group up that in parentheses and then divide by that 4.3. In most situations in MATLAB, spaces don't matter. I put spaces on either side of the subtraction sign here, but I did not for this one. It doesn't make a difference. It's whatever your personal preference is for what organization works for you. Next one, uh, 7.5 minus 2.8. Let's see how well copy and paste works. Might as well check it. Just to make our lives a little bit simpler. Yeah, not great. Um, you do need to be very careful copy and pasting, especially from PDFs, uh, but really from any uh, Word documents as well. This might look like a minus sign. It's not. And it being highlighted in red, I think, tells us that. So let's put a subtraction sign there. This looks like an asterisk. It is not. So let's replace that with an asterisk, which is Shift-8 on your keyboard, standard keyboards at least. Now, I didn't copy the denominator, divide by 4.3, so I need to do that and I need to make sure that the numerator is grouped. It's always a good idea when doing division, just to group your numerator and even your denominator. You can always wrap an extra set of parentheses around the denominator too. There's nothing wrong with doing so, unless the extra parentheses confuse you, in which case, don't do it. All right, one, two, three, let's run this before we go much further. Do those look like the correct answers? Yes, they do. All right, 7.5 minus 2.8 over 4.3 squared, all right. So this is very similar to the previous, so I might as well copy it down. Again, the shortcuts that I'm using there are I just go to the beginning of the line or the end of the line. If I'm at the end, which I was, I hold Shift and press Home, and then Control C to copy it, and then I go down to the next line, Control V to paste it. Just some little shortcuts there. Then I make the modifications so that it is as requested in the problem, and we want 4.3 to be squared. So I use the caret symbol, Shift 6, and then two, and a square it right there. All right, I think I did that right, 0 0.25, great. Next one right here, three times 2.2 minus 2.8. Okay, there's a lot to copy down, so bear with me. I will speed this up just a little bit. You can always change the speed of the video that you're as you're watching it on YouTube. Go down to the little, uh, I think it's a gear icon uh, right below the video, and you can change it to speed up or speed down, whatever works for you. And I recommend using those settings uh, and watching the video at your at the best pace that works for you. All right, this time, this whole quantity, this whole divided quantity is going to be cubed. So I need another set of outer parentheses there. This one's getting a bit complicated. There's a lot of parentheses to keep track of. So one thing you should notice is when I first put the cursor next to a set of parentheses, there's a little underline that will go under both uh, the matching pairs. So if I click on this one right here, it's underlined there and underlined there. It's a very brief, but if you look quickly, underline, it'll show you sort of the paired parentheses. Uh, you can see those little underlines there. All right, I'm not done with this one. So plus three, okay, so plus three on the end. Use the spacing in a way that makes sense for you. If you wanna add in a bunch of spaces, if that's helpful to you, then do it. Uh, it's not helpful to me, so I don't but uh, you can do it your own way. I'm gonna use Control-Enter, rerun this section. 
great, 3.69. All right, we're still good. Last one right here, 42 to the 2.1 plus 7 is how it starts out. I don't need parentheses around this because order of operations states that it will happen before the plus 7, but you can add them in if it makes you feel better. Divide by 10 to the 1.7. These parentheses I do need because I want the quantity in the numerator to uh, have its operations occur before the denominator. Because we are converting from mathematical notation, where the fraction shows what is grouped, to MATLAB, where we have to write everything on one line, we have to add in more parentheses than are shown in this mathematical format. And you will have to do that at times, particularly the parentheses around the numerator. Now then, we're trying to square the entire quantity with these outer set of parentheses that they actually wrote. So we need another outer set of parentheses around the whole thing. All right, and then I'll display the results of that. This is just a scientific notation. So what it means is 2.6304 times 10 to the third power, or in other words, 2630.4. So we did do that correctly, even though the format looks slightly different. Fill in the display below to make your own calculation using multiple arithmetic operations. So for this, you know, you're just being asked to do, you know, whatever you feel like, uh, you know, make something up and uh, just play around and have fun with it and uh, do whatever you want to do. Great. And that's it for the first exercise.